because for those who may not understand these kinds of moments, can you take us inside the mind of a player who was in those moments and is thriving the way that you have been able to when it comes to the Celtics or just in game-winning situations? What is going through your mind when you get in these kinds of situations to try to win a game? I mean, as a player, a uh, basketball player, those are the best moments you can experience in in basketball career, you know. Uh, there are certain games that mean more, but hitting a game winner is just uh, one of the feelings that is the best in the world. Mavericks get the 107-104 win at the America Airlines Center. Luka Doncic sends the crowd home happy, uh, beating the Celtics on a buzzer beater for the second year in a row. Uh, my name is Kevin Gray, 105 through the fan. This it's Tim Cato of the Athletic Dallas Mavericks beat writer covering all things for the Dallas Mavericks. Uh, Tim, the Dallas Mavericks moved to 6-3 and three on the season after getting uh, the 107-104 win here at home. It doesn't feel like a team, though, that's 6-3 and three in third place in the Western Conference right now, does it? I mean, after a shot like that, it doesn't – I think all it should feel like is, oh, wow, Luka, <laughs> pretty good, huh? <laughs> yeah. I, I think I think that, it, like, a win, a, an emotional shot like that, like a, a shot that makes you feel emotions, a very positive ones, like I think that's probably what all fans are feeling right now. Uh, who cares what the record <laughs> is? They're 6-3. and three, Like, that's good. I, I, only, only good vibes about the team. Like, I, I think it's probably where people are at tonight. I will say that the – I think the, the the way that the team was worse in the second half would have been framed a little bit differently without that shot. Uh, it did feel like they kind of slugged and and you know were sluggish in the second half after building that lead up. Um, but I think all things considered, that that that's a pretty good win and that's a that's a very good shot. It was an amazing shot. Josh Richardson, unfortunately, the victim in this case because Luka Doncic goes and gets to the left side, hits it over him as he's able to knock down the shot to get the 107-104 win. Uh, it felt like for a while there the Mavericks, who blew a 17-point lead at halftime, Jason Tatum was spectacular, went 8 of 8 from the field, 4 of 4 from the three-point line in the uh, second half, was really good, especially in the third quarter. The Mavericks got a 19-4 run put on them, led by Jason Kidd, uh, or excuse me, not Jason Kidd, led by Jason Tatum, excuse me. Uh, Dennis Schroeder was also good in this game. What did you see from the Mavericks, especially in the second half, that allowed the Celtics to kind of get back into this ballgame? Yeah, it did, it did feel like a lot of Tatum. Uh, you know, at, at times they were doubling him. Uh, you know, it got to the point where Tatum had proved, like, okay, he is cooking one-on-one mismatches to force doubles, but those doubles that were forced were a little bit a little sloppy. Um, you know, Schroeder, uh, Schroeder was, was all right. I, you know, from what I saw, uh, Richardson was making some shots. You know, I think, uh, I think that was his best game in like since coming to Boston. Mm. Uh, so, you know, to some extent you're going to live with that stuff to some extent. Um, you know, it was, it was defensive scheming stuff. I'd have to kind of watch it back before I had any like strong takeaways mm -hmm. from what they did right and mm -hmm. wrong. Uh, but but all things considered, like I, I thought that some of the you know even some of the offensive possessions, like it, Dallas could have pulled away with shot making, and once again they're still really, you know, not having that um, that that swing three point game where you know you feel like their bottom five three point percentage goes to middle of the pack. Um, but I still think that at some point that's coming. There's enough good shooters on this team that haven't made enough shots that it's it's bound to happen. This game also saw the return of Chris Porzingis after missing the last five games due to low back tightness. A uh, very happy Chris Porzingis after the game was ready to get back on the floor, had 21 points, had 10 points in the fourth quarter. What did you think about his move? Because I, I wasn't necessarily concerned too much about production. I really just wanted to see how he moved on the floor. But he came up with some big plays, especially in the fourth quarter for the Mavericks. Yeah, I thought, I thought he looked solid defensively. I thought that was a good thing to see. Uh, there was a couple moments that I I wrote down in my and the you know the notes I was taking of wow I think this this you know wide open layup at the rim was generated because KP's spacing is back on the floor. Uh, There's actually several there's definitely several times where I was like oh wow that that was an easy layup and mm -hmm. I think when you see an easy layup in the Mavs system, uh, you can give a lot of that credit to KP and just the presence and the danger that he brings. Um, or, or really just the, the way that defenses believe like he brings this level of sh danger or shooting uh, to the to the court and they react accordingly even if on a night like tonight he was only 0 of three you know I think that puts him at like 20 percent on threes this season <laughs> right. um, but yeah clearly he's he's a better shooter than that even if he doesn't you know the, the weird paradox about him has always been he doesn't quite ma as make he doesn't quite make as many threes as it looks like he should mm -hmm. and as defenses react to him uh, to him being open. But 
it doesn't really matter if you're providing that spacing and opening up layups for your teammates. Like that is the most important thing that he has on the offensive end for the Mavericks. And uh, it, I think it was good to see that back. It was good to see him back on the floor and Luka Doncic obviously sending the crowd home happy with the win. The Dallas Mavericks get back on the floor on Monday when they take on the New Orleans Pelicans. We'll see if Porzingis will be available for that next game there. He was ready to get home because he was ready to watch some UFC action, much like myself, big UFC fan. But at the same time, I think this is a good win for them. They overcame themselves by blowing a 17-point lead, but they were able to hang in there. I thought defensively in the first half, rotations were good and set the tone, only holding the Celtics to 40 points in the first half. But that third quarter is really when things kind of turned around, especially for the Celtics, and give credit to Tatum, who went full uh, full Jason Tatum experience, <laughs> especially uh, in the second half. But we'll see how the Mavericks move forward. Again, a team that's 6-3 and three in the Western Conference, third place, 4-1 and one at home, and – it's always a good night when you get a Luka Doncic buzzer beater to send the crowd home happy. And something about the Celtics and hitting buzzer This is the second year in a row that he's done this against the uh, against the Celtics and the way that he performed, especially in late moments like he did tonight. There's there's there is something cosmic to go straight from <laughs> Dirk Nowitzki to Luka Doncic. Yeah, there's just something cosmic that that can't quite be defined. Yeah, it's incredible. A lot of fun here at the American Airlines Center, 107-104. The Mavericks get the win to move to 6-3 and three on the season. He is Tim Cato of The Athletic. They can find you where, Tim, on, on Twitter? Uh, Tim underscore Cato. C-A-T-O. Go flood his you know his Twitter with more follows, okay? Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Kevin Gray Sports. Kevin Gray, 105 through the fan. Mavericks win 107-104. Appreciate the time, Tim. Yeah, this was fun. Thank you. You got it, man. We'll do this again sometime. Absolutely. Peace.